On November 27th of 2022, the first eruption of the Mauna Loa volcano in Hawaii since 1984 began. It is now day 4 of its ongoing eruption, and as a flow of lava creeps closer and closer to Hawaii Route 200, as shown in this video courtesy of the Two Pineapples YouTube channel, it seems inevitable that unless the eruption abruptly ends, the road will be cut off by a flow of material by Friday evening. A Hawaiian Volcano Observatory update post cited a similar timetable. According to them, as of the writing of this video, lava is a mere 3.6 miles or 5.8 kilometers from the edge of Route 200. Lava from Fisher 3, which has created the fastest moving flow, is advancing at a speed of 427 feet or 130 meters an hour. However, as lava flows near the road, the overall slope of Mauna Loa decreases. This is best shown via a 6 mile segment with 7 markers showing their elevation in meters above sea level, each marker a mile apart based on Google Earth height data. Whereas the mile segment closest to Mauna Loa has a height difference of 142 meters, the mile segment closest to the road has a height difference of only 10 meters. This means that it could take longer than originally forecasted to reach the road as the lava flow slowly decreases in speed due to a gentler slope. If you have been on Route 200, you might have noticed a weird sight on the road or the side of the road, strands of golden material. These are not a variety of animal fur or vehicle debris, but rather are a type of volcanic glass somewhat similar to obsidian. Known as Pele's hair, these form during many effusive eruptions in Hawaii and elsewhere through the stretching of erupted lava into very thin strands. Although this can form through several methods, at Mauna Loa it most likely originated through lava fountaining. In that case, Pele's hair forms when a gas bubble forms in a lava lake or lava pool above an erupting vent, which is then ejected upwards. This breaks what was the skin of the bubble into many tiny pieces which are then stretched into tiny strands of golden material. Due to its small size, it can be easily blown long distances beyond the edge of a lava flow or a lava lake, which on rare occasions can even pile up several inches thick such as shown in this photo from the Ka'u Desert adjacent to the Kilauea volcano. While Fisher 3 is still the main emphasis of activity, Fisher 4 is still quite active although its lava flows are slower in comparison. Its lava flows are according to a Hawaiian Volcano Observatory update post advancing at a speed of around 164 feet or 50 meters an hour. All of this activity is emitting a substantial amount of sulfur dioxide gas totaling an estimated 250,000 tons per day. Although sulfur dioxide is colorless, you can see traces of it in a volcanic plume due to its edges having a bluish tint as the gas scatters incoming sunlight. Although this is old news now, on day one of the eruption, some of the lava erupted in Mauna Loa's San Caldera spilled over to the southwest. However, this lava did not travel very far as the eruption most likely permanently shifted elsewhere. Although people who live on the south or southwest of Mauna Loa's caldera are not completely safe, they can rest easy for now for one simple reason. According to the US Geological Survey, the Mauna Loa volcano has never produced a single eruption that involved both rift zones. Since a northeast rift zone is erupting, the southwest rift zone will most likely remain inactive for the ongoing eruption. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank Zed for rejoining as a YouTube member to support this channel.